What is up you guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. If you're not new, thank you for coming back. So today's video is going to be super quick and easy, but it is a question I get asked all of the time and that's why your soldering iron isn't holding solder. So in today's video, we're going to go over three main reasons why your soldering iron might not be holding solder. So if that sounds like something you're into, let's get started. Alrighty guys, so I've got you in my overhead view here and that's because there are a few products that I'm going to want to talk to you guys and show you how they work. But before we do that, we need to talk about number one on the list and that is temperature. So like I say to you guys all of the time, getting an iron with a temperature control is the most important thing. Now, like I've talked about before, all different solders have different melting points. So 6040 lead based solder has a different melting point than 5050 does. 5050 has a different melting point than lead free does. Lead free has a different melting point than pure silver solder and the list goes on. So having a temperature controlled iron is key and having a good quality iron is key. And I know it's tempting to just buy that $20 Amazon soldering iron, but if you can save up the money and get something a little bit nicer, like the Hakko FX601, I definitely recommend it. Anything with a temperature control on it is going to be miles and miles better than just a basic soldering iron that you have no idea what it's heating to. So that's the first thing we're addressing. I think people get a little bit confused on the difference between soldering iron not sticking to your solder and it just purely not melting the solder in the first place. So making sure that your soldering iron gets hot enough to melt the solder is number one on the list. So now that we've talked about number one, let's talk about number two and this is what I find to be the most common. Your iron isn't tinned properly. Now what does that mean? Tinning the tip of your iron essentially means coating the tip of your iron in a light coat of metal. That's all tinning is. Tinning just means lightly coating something in metal. So if we're tinning the tip of our iron, we're lightly coating the tip of our iron in metal. The reason we do that is to preserve the tip life of our iron. If the tip of our iron is not tinned properly, every time we turn it on, the iron itself is going to be heating the tip of the iron instead of heating the metal we've tinned it with. Does that make sense? So when we tin the tip of our iron, we coat it in a light coat of metal. So when we turn the iron on, it is heating that light coat of metal instead of heating the tip of the iron itself. If you heat the tip of the iron itself and it's not tinned properly, not only is it not going to pick up and hold solder, it is going to quite literally burn a hole through the tip of your iron. Trust me, I've done it. Again, I've made the mistake of buying that $20 Amazon soldering iron when I first started and I burned a hole in the tip of my iron, literally. It was a hole through the tip of my iron because every time I turned it on, it wasn't tinned properly and it was heating the tip of the iron instead of heating the metal surrounding it, right? Does that make sense, you guys? So, tinning, again, all tinning means is lightly coating something in a small coat of metal, that's it. So, we've gotta make sure that the iron tip is tinned properly and to do that, we can use a product like this. So this is tip tinner. This is from the brand Thermaltronics. You can pick this right up on Amazon. I'll have all the products that I talk about in today's video listed down below. And this is what it looks like. So it's a very hard, almost sandy substance. So essentially what tip tinner is realistically is just a flux and solder mixed together. And this is going to perfectly tin the tip of your iron. Every time you get a new iron, you wanna make sure that that tip is tinned properly. And really you can tell how it's tinned by just looking at the tip. Does it have that super metallic shiny look? Is it grabbing metal? No problem. Is it melting as soon as you put the solder on it, etc. So here's what tip tinner looks like. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how it works in one second. So. Like I said, I've got my soldering iron on right here. I'm using the Hakko FX601. That is my all-time favorite soldering iron. And I've also got my Hakko FA400 smoke absorber right here. So as we're talking about these products, all of these are going to emit quite a bit of smoke. And just like with Flux, you do not want to be breathing this stuff in, guys. So whether you're wearing a respirator or have a smoke absorber, please make sure you're using it when you're using these kinds of products. So I'm going to turn on my smoke absorber right here. Hopefully, you guys will still be able to hear me all right and I'll show you how this tip tinner works. So again, this is in a metal case, so this is going to get pretty hot pretty quickly. So I'm gonna keep it down on the table like this. I'm gonna pull my soldering iron out of my stand, give it a quick clean on my damp sponge, or you can use your cleaner if that's what you use instead. And I'm going to stick the tip 
into the tip tinner and see how it melts right away. So we're just kind of gently rocking this tip back and forth, sufficiently coating it in this tip tinning product. If you kind of want to scrape it back and forth, you can absolutely do that. And we're just making sure we're getting this tip tinner all over the tip of our iron. Okay, see how beautifully bright, shiny, and metallic the tip of my iron looks now. It looks perfectly clean. That is going to, no doubt, pick up a bead and hold it so, so well. So, let's test it out. After you use a tip tinner, you can use it right before you shut your iron off. You can use it in between soldering if you want to. You can use it anytime you want. Tin the tip of your iron, shut it off and let it cool off. You can tin it if you're in the middle of a project if you really needed to. You can tin it before you start working and just let it sit for a little bit. So. You can use it however you want to. And like I said, getting to know these products, it will make it easier to kind of identify which one you want to use at what time. This is marketed as a tip tinner and this is a chemical paste and it's more so marketed towards cleaning the tip of your iron versus tinning it. But I'll leave that up to you guys and you guys can just explore with either of them. I do not prefer this one. We're gonna talk about that in a second. But again, as you get to know these products, it will be a little bit easier to decipher when you want to use which one. And and at the end of the day, everything is personal preference. My personal favorite is the Hackle Chemical Paste. I just love it. So let's wipe this off. See how fast this melts. Look at that. Immediately melts it. As soon as the solder touches the tip of my iron, it's melting and holding that solder beautifully. That is a well-tinned tip if you ask me. Okay, so now that we've got the tip of our iron tinned perfectly, let's talk about number three, and that is making sure that the tip of your iron is clean. If you have an iron that is so gunked up in old corroded metal, the whole tip of it is black, of course it's never going to hold a bead of solder, you need to clean it. So you can pick any one of these products realistically to clean your tip, but if you're dealing with something like this black corrosion that happens, a basic tip cleaner is realistically going to do the trick. Shoving your iron inside this tip cleaner, giving it a good one-two back and forth, pulling it out and then sticking it in a chemical paste or sticking it into a tip tinner is going to do the trick. So because we just tinned the tip of my iron, it should be absolutely okay. Let's just put some more solder on it while it's sitting here because again, you guys, you never want to leave your soldering iron on if there's no solder on the tip. So cleaning the tip of your soldering iron. This is one of my favorite products and this is the Hakko 599B. This is a tip cleaner and essentially all it is is one of those like spongy metal brushes and it's inside a nice container because this catches all of the solder beads that fly off as you're cleaning the tip. So again, all you have to do to clean the tip of your iron is put your tip cleaner down, shove your iron inside, and twist it back and forth gently and slowly. You don't wanna be pulling the tip out and in, out and in, because then hot solder beads are gonna be flying all over the place. So just give it a one, two back and forth, pull it out, and then stick it into the tip tinner or stick it into the chemical paste, whichever one you like better. So, of course, me being me, I love the chemical paste. So I'm gonna stick it in there. We've got smoke. I'm gonna turn on my smoke absorber here. Flipping it back and forth. This one melts very, very quickly. And now I'm just going to let this chemical paste sit on the tip. It's the same thing as the tip tinner, guys. I do think it's important to have all of these products if you can. These are all very affordable products. I think it's important to have a tip cleaner, an actual physical tip cleaner. And I think it's important to have a tip tinner paste and a chemical paste. Okay, guys, so we've talked about number one, making sure that you have an iron that actually gets hot enough to melt whatever specific solder you're working with. Number two, making sure the tip of your iron is properly tinned. And number three, making sure the tip of your iron is clean. So we talked about my favorite products. Let's talk about this one right here. This is my least favorite, but I do have it and I do feel like I should tell you guys about it because it is a favorite of a lot of people. This is a sal ammoniac block and this is what it looks like. It is a super hard block. I don't like it. It's never worked for me but it might work for you. So at least just check it out. 
give the reviews a read, read the description maybe, and see if that's something you're into. But essentially, this is doing the same thing that our other products, the tip, tip tinner and chemical paste is doing. So once again, guys, number one, making sure that your iron gets hot enough to melt the metal that you're working with specifically. Again, get your hands on a temperature controlled iron. My personal favorite and always will be most likely is the Hacko FX601. This is not sponsored. I just love Hacko. Love them. Hacko FX601, best iron. I've been using this one for years. Love it. Get yourself a temperature controlled iron and pay attention to your melting points. So number two, making sure the tip of your iron is tinned properly. Again, tinning, all it means is lightly coating something in a coat of metal. That's it. That's all it means. So making sure your iron is tinned properly. Now, number three, making sure your iron is clean. As you use your iron, it is going to kind of build up gunk, corrosion. You need to clean it. So the most important thing is an actual physical tip cleaner. This is the Hacko 599B. You just stick it right in there, give it a couple twists, and that should do the trick as long as it's not extremely dirty and extremely corrosion built up. Look at that. Look at how that solder dried on there. Crazy. So as long as it's not crazy corroded, crazy dirty, just a couple twists back and forth and this should do the job. Once you pull it out of your physical tip cleaner, then I'd say maybe go in with a tip tinner or go in with a chemical paste. My personal favorite is the chemical paste from Hacko. I kind of use it as a cure-all. When it comes down to it, this tip tinner is great. I absolutely recommend it. It's very, very accessible being right on Amazon. And if the tip of your iron is already very clean, grabbing something like a tip tinner will definitely do the trick. It works beautifully. All right, you guys, I think that's it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. And of course, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. But yeah, I think that's it for today's video. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you did, comment down below and let me know what do you want to see next. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I don't need a remote for this thing. Having to get up and down so many times, it's rough.